Hi, this is Morley and this is the M-Wire. Well, I said this would happen. I said the looting and burning of buildings would spread to other cities, and it has. Uh, sun, starting on Sunday night in Chicago, dozens of businesses were, were looted. There were many arrests. It's just getting crazy, and this is going to probably spread to every major city in the United States. I hate to say it, but it, had, it shows no signs of slowing down. Well, let's get into this thing here. Chicago looting leads to more than 100 arrests, dozens of damaged businesses. Hundreds of individuals have participated in widespread looting and vandalism across downtown Chicago early Monday engaged in abject criminal behavior and were not part of an organized protest, the city's mayor said. Finally, Lightfoot admits that there's a problem. She's been in denial for months now, but she's actually acknowledging there's somewhat of a problem. Good for her. Dozens of stores, banks, and other businesses were broken into and burglarized. More than 100 people were arrested and at least 13 officers were injured, according to police. The unrest followed an officer-involved shooting on Sunday. Democratic Mayor Lori Lightfoot described the overnight chaos as an assault on our city and called on state prosecutors to hold those involved accountable. This had nothing to do with legitimate First Amendment expression, Lightfoot said during an interview Monday morning. What occurred in our downtown and surrounding communities was abject criminal behavior, pure and simple. These were not poor people engaged in petty theft to feed themselves and their families, she added. This was straight up f criminal conduct. Looting in Chicago's Magnificent Mile shopping district and other areas of the city's downtown area began around 11 p.m. Sunday, police said. Video captured by local reporters and bystanders shows people breaking in windows to enter and burglarize various stores, including a Nordstrom, Best Buy, Pandora, and 7-Eleven. Some individuals who participated in the looting could be seen piling into cars with stolen goods and fleeing the scene. Photos of the vandalism showed anti-police graffiti in some areas. Authorities also believe the looting may be connected with an officer-involved shooting that occurred in the city's Inglewood neighborhood on Sunday afternoon. Chicago Police Superintendent Dan Brown said during the news conference Monday, Officers had responded to a report, a report a man with a gun, Brown said. The suspect, a 20-year-old man, allegedly fled the scene when officers approached him the suspect allegedly fired a gun at the officers as he was running away, and police returned fire and struck him. The suspect was transported to a hospital and is expected to survive his injuries, Brown said. The shooting wasn't captured on body cameras, as spokesman for the Chicago Police Department told reporters Sunday afternoon. Earl Allen, the brother of the Chicago suspect, has disputed the police's account of the altercation. Allen told the Chicago Sun-Times that he and his brother had been walking in a group of people and one of the individuals made a comment to the officers in a police vehicle prompting a pursuit. Police released a photo of the gun they allegedly obtained from the suspect, but Allen also denied that it belonged to his brother. Following the shooting, there was a very intense interaction between police at the scene and the crowd that had gathered nearby, Brown said Monday. Social media posts shared in the wake of the shooting encouraged people to loot downtown later that night, Brown said. Police dispatched about 400 officers to the area suspected to be targeted. Some of the stores damaged overnight were still in the process of recovering from looting that occurred during the nationwide anti-racism protests following the death of George Floyd in Monday in police custody in May. But city officials rejected any suggestions that the most recent looting was part of a similar protest. Brown said what had unfolded was pure criminality and violence against police. Criminals took to the street with confidence that there would be no consequences for their action, he said. I, for one, refuse to allow these cowardly acts to hold our city hostage. At one point early Monday, shots were fired at officers from a passing vehicle while they were arrested suspecting looters downtown, police said. Officers returned fire, Brown said. No officers were injured. It wasn't ultimately clear if anyone inside the vehicle was struck by gunfire. 
As the unrest unfolded overnight, authorities tried to cut off access to the downtown area by closing streets, raising bridges, and asking the, the Chicago Transit Authority to halt service. By late Monday morning, CTA service had resumed and bridges were lowered. Some streets remain closed. Downtown access will be restricted from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. until th further notice. And there will be an increasing police presence in the area, Brown said during the news conference Monday morning. Rumors circulated that the unrest was sparked by the police killing of a 15-year-old boy on Sunday. But officials denied such claims, calling them blatant misinformation. The origin of the unsubstantiated theory is unclear. General distrust, distrust of police forces nationwide has grown since Floyd's death and the killing of Breonna Taylor, a 26-year-old black woman, earlier this year. Police fatally shot Taylor in her Louisville, Kentucky home in March after obtaining a no-knock search warrant linking to a drug investigation involving a suspect whom police believed was using her address. The police report from the incident listed the injuries sustained by Taylor as none, even though she was shot at least eight times. In Chicago, which has long suffered from gang violence, has seen a surge in murders and shootings in recent months. While overall crime decreased last month compared to July 2019, shootings increased 75%, jumping from 232 reported in July 2019 to 406 reported last month according to data released by the Chicago police. There were at least 31 shooting incidents, including three homicides in Chicago this past weekend, Brown said Monday. Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox urged city and state officials to have an honest conversation about the weekend's discord and warned against engaging in dishonest blame games. We've seen global pandemic coupled with civil unrest coupled with economic depression, Fox said it during a press briefing Monday afternoon, and we've seen the violence that we've seen now. We cannot talk about all hands on deck and simply seek solutions to complex problems. We must continue to work together. This is absolutely terrible what's happening. It's it's just it's just surreal at this point. But we knew this would spread to other cities and and unfortunately it has. Thank you very much for coming along to my video. I uh, I ask that you comment, share and subscribe. And uh God bless you and we'll see you in the next one.